Thank you so much for joining today's journal club. Today I will talk about the adaptable trial which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. My name is Dr. Farzana Hawk. I am an assistant professor of medicine. I do not have any relevant financial disclosures. Adaptable, which stands for aspirin dosing, a patient-centric trial assessing benefits and long-term effectiveness. I was truly fascinated by this study because this study is the first pragmatic trial in the U.S. As you know, in the U.S., we have aspirin 325 milligram, also 81 milligram. At many other countries like Bangladesh, there is also aspirin 75 milligram. Like any other physician, I was always curious to find out the appropriate and safe dose for my patients. Today, my goal is to have a better understanding of these novel open level pragmatic trial. Also, employing cutting edge data to determine the appropriate dose of aspirin. For this study, they analyzed two outcomes. First, primary effectiveness outcome, which was the composite of death from any cause, hospitalization for MI and hospitalization for a stroke. For primary safety outcome, they analyzed hospitalization for major bleeding. Let's see how did they outline this study. They enrolled around 15,000 patients for this study. And this study was conducted for around 26 months. After they identified those 15,000 patients through electronic medical record, they are divided into two groups. For 81 milligram aspirin group, they took 7,540 patients. And then for 325 milligram group, they enrolled 7,536 patients. The goal was to identify the difference between this 81 milligram group and 325 milligram group for secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. This study was conducted in 40 centers after they identified those patients through electronic medical record. It was very interesting to see that there was no in-person visits. Patient used patient portal to give informed consent and they purchased their aspirin by themselves. Patient used either patient portal or contacted by telephone to inform about their aspirin dosing. This follow-up was done every three to six months, either through virtually or by telephone. Let's see what was the baseline characteristics for this patient population. The median age was around 68 years. Around 70% of patient population were men and 30% around were female. Around 9% of patients identified themselves as African American. Let's now dive into the results of this interesting article. For primary effectiveness outcome, which was the composite of death, hospitalization for MI or hospitalization for a stroke. They found for 81 milligram aspirin group, it was 7.2%. On the other hand, for 325 milligram group, it was 7.5% with hazard ratio 1.02. This graph is illustrating that for death, hospitalization for MI or for hospitalization for a stroke, there was no statistical significant difference between this 81 milligram and 325 milligram aspirin dose group. For hospitalization from major bleeding, for 81 milligram group, it was 0.6%. For 
for 325 milligram group it was also 0.6 percent with hazard ratio 1.18. This graph is showing that for major bleeding between 81 milligram group and 325 milligram group there was no significant difference. I was very intrigued by seeing the percentage of aspirin dose switching. Here you can see that 325 milligram group had much higher rate of aspirin dose switching than 81 milligram group. Around 42% patient switched the dosing who were in the 325 milligram group. Similarly, for aspirin discontinuation was much higher in 325 milligram group. Let's learn what are the strength of this study. First and foremost, this study is a groundbreaking first pragmatic randomized trial in the US. It set the stage for more similar studies in the US in future. The sample size was large as well as the cost of this study was much less than the other randomized control trial. There were a couple of limitations. First of all, they did not assess for minor bleeding events. Secondly, majority of patients around 85% patients were on 81 milligram aspirin before the trial. That may have some impact on this study. Finally, patients switched randomized dose and the switching was much higher for 325 milligram group. Here is interesting to notice that not only patients but also physicians switched this randomized dosing of aspirin. It could be based on the preference or bias about the risk factor or indication of aspirin dosing. In conclusion, according to this study between patients assigned to 81 milligram and 325 milligram aspirin daily, there was no significant differences in cardiovascular events or major bleeding. Thank you so much for listening today. Please like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more resourceful videos. I will see you in the next video. All the best.